Okay. Hi, everybody. Small group today. That's okay. Small but mighty. This is the Chaos Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Working Group. Um, I'm Elizabeth. I'm the community manager for Chaos, so I'm not Chaos Community, but I am deeply involved. So let me just share this. Uh, just a quick reminder, this is under the Code of Conduct for Chaos. You all know that, um, but I'll say it anyway, just for just for the record. Um, I have a serious question today. I don't know. I don't know how I feel about a serious question like this. It was either this or like, um, you know, what's your favorite, I don't know, drink. I, I, it was, yeah. Do you like marshmallows, you know? <laughs> yeah, right. Literally, yeah. So, <laughs> no, you know what? Yeah, I'm going to dig deep today because I think that's interesting. Actually, <laughs> I did have the question of, um, can you read cursive writing? Because I don't think my son can, he can't. They did not like teach that, he can't. Oh, that's over, I think, isn't it? Weird, right? Yeah. yeah. Then I thought, well, that's gonna just make me feel old. So I'm not gonna ask that, but. My dad only writes in cursive. Right, yeah. It's, it's really, it is very odd to see it. Mm -hmm. Mine's a hybrid, I think. See, this is gonna be a question next time. Do you, are you a printer or a? a but like if you see somebody who writes in cursive, like only uses cursive writing, it's really interesting. Not a hybrid, but like they, they adhere to all the cursive rules that we learned back in the day. <laughs> it is kind of hard to read. Is that an American thing? Or is that like a, so I'm curious about folks who are not in the US. Do you all like print letters or do you have like this flourishy kind of cursive we call it cursive writing. I'm just curious. This is not part of the, this isn't even the question, <laughs> but I'm just really, really curious. Okay, we'll think about it. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, we can talk about it later. <laughs> um, okay, so let's hop on to the agenda. So the, uh, I dropped this in here on Mary Blessing's behalf because she had it on the agenda for the community meeting this week and we didn't get a chance to talk about it. Uh, she is not here today. We can go ahead and just click on this. Um, so um, a few of us from Chaos are on this team that is revising the Contributor Covenant, which the Chaos Code of Conduct is based on um, loosely. We have adapted it to our specific needs, but um, they are asking for feedback this team is asking for feedback for those of us who have uh, are on projects that use that. So um, if you would like to fill that out, that would be great as we build this in um, to the new version of the contributor covenant. Mary Blessing is the project manager for that whole thing. So um, good for her. <laughs> that's, it's a big job. Um, so that's why she's kind of put this in here. So I would say if you have questions, reach out to her. What's that? What is happening? So, so are we updating our code of conduct? We may, uh, okay. based on how this comes down, but this is the one um, by Coraline, mm -hmm. like the base one that a lot of folks use, but uh, it's been 10 years, I think, since uh, it was first created, and it's gone through a couple versions, but um, it's just kind of time to, uh, you know, time to refresh it. Um, there are some goals with this, uh, making it more, um, a little easily, easier to translate, for instance, is one of the goals for revising this. And um, there are others um, just trying to make it more usable and reflect kind of the way that open source has evolved. So um, so yeah, so there's just a, a survey there. If, you know, because we're on a project that uses a contributor covenant, if, uh, if anybody wants to fill that out, they can. Okay, I'll take a, I, is, do you know, like what are some of the questions on the survey? I mean, I'm sort of oh. without filling the whole thing out, but. Yeah, um, I, I don't actually remember. Um, it's been a uh, here. I'm gonna put mine in here. Let's see what this is. Um, yeah, it's going to be about this, this kind of stuff. So, OK, but like, what are the next questions? Well, let's find out. Oh, OK, I mean, I can fill it out, too, but I'm just curious where this. Uh, an admin, where do you use it? Total people. Language is a thing, awareness, like that kind of stuff. I don't know what else is in there, but yeah. So it might take you a few minutes to do it, but. Okay. 
just looking for feedback on that. And um, again, if you have questions, uh, Mary Blessing is probably a great uh, resource for you. And the, um, she's also on our code of conduct team. So uh, any changes that might affect the way we enforce or, um, you know, that might be applicable to us that we want to also adapt, we can, that she'll know about it. <laughs> Clearly she'll know about it and they'll bring it probably to the community. I'm sure they'll bring it to the community before any changes yeah, yeah. ever make a change without us. So. I think I would guess uh, any change to the code of conduct probably has to go through the board. Through the board, the, yeah, the board, I would think so. I guess. Yeah. I mean, I can't imagine it's a problem, but just process-wise. For yes, for sure, for sure. And Georg is also on that uh, committee, and is okay. so is Neil. So those three folks are, um, yeah, they're on top of it. Okay. And there may not be anything. You know, it may be like, oh, the changes that contributor covenants making don't really apply to us. But um, who knows? We'll see. Okay. I'm just kind of helping out with that team, that contributor covenant team, just in support mostly. Okay. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and move on. This is also kind of on Dawn's behalf. I put this on here as a carryover from last week. Um, if you haven't voted in this poll and you would like to, here's the link where you can do that. And if you don't know what bus factor is, we can explain that to you. Just need to ask in the chat and we'll explain it to you. Not a big deal. Um, next one is, uh, so Emma opened an issue in our community repo um, during OSSNA talking about this word inclusion. Um, I'll give you all a minute to just kind of read her comments. And then I thought maybe, I, I told Emma we would bring it up here. I didn't know if she would have a chance to attend this meeting, but I, I did um, let her know that we would bring it up and certainly discuss it. Um, so I'll just give you all a few minutes to kind of read through this. So I'm not sure if this makes sense to folks, this issue. Um, it, I think I think if I had to summarize what Emma is saying, it's that um, the word inclusive might not speak to folks as much as um, this part, security and risk and building trust. And like, that's really what the heart of it is. Uh, just based on conversations that she had at OSSNA and yeah so I just um I was I was kind of hoping she'd be here to like add her context in but um kind of doing it on her behalf so um what do you all think about this uh so like in the case that she mentions the case of excuse me the case of inclusive leadership so would it be changing the title of the metric do you know or I don't, I don't know for sure. I think uh, yes, but, or yes and, also kind of changing the, uh, the language inside of the metrics uh, to focus more on like more, I don't want to say tangible, but uh, uh, I don't know how to say this properly. Um, maybe like less, feely like yes inclusion is great but also there is a facet of having a diverse leadership team that helps reduce risk and that builds trust in your community and like that's really the heart of uh why we want to have a diverse team and why we need inclusive leadership or a diverse leadership team one reason why okay so that just that would be more like on the text inside of the I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Because like the way, because we have inclusive leadership as part of our badging process. Right. So it's, it would be a huge change if we were to change that particular mm -hmm. metric. Like we could not do that lightly. Mm -hmm. And I, I feel like the inclusive leadership metric is just asking 
communities to reflect on how they attend to ensuring that <clears throat> um, leadership positions within their community are open to all and available to all. That's what I feel like inclusive leadership is about. Less about how the leadership ensures a safe place. That's valid. So I would, in that case, in this one case that she mentions, like having a perhaps a different metric, which is about ensuring um, like trust within the community or something like that would be the title. And then the question would be like, how does leadership, how do other community members help ensure that trust within the community? Is yeah, that that's valid. Yeah. I think that's, that's a certainly valid point. Um, I'm reading this part right here. Um, uh, it feels like a nice to have more than a must have for people who don't invest in diversity, equity, inclusion metrics. I think that's what, but they care about trust because of the security and risk part of that. So I think it's, yeah, she's trying to uh, broaden the pool of folks that care about this metric. I think ultimately that's what she's trying to do. And it's almost like a, a, a PR for the metric. <laughs> it seems like, like by making it like taking up that word inclusive, then it's just about leadership and it's about uh, it's it's more attractive or seems like it might be more attractive to folks who traditionally are like oh yeah DEI metrics are nice but what I really care about is like that my project isn't gonna crumble because of you know whatever mm -hmm. so I don't know I don't know but to your point Matt like maybe there is a separate metric that is about it's trust just about that yeah and that would have facets of obviously diversity equity inclusion built into it but it is kind of looking at it a, a different way i mean is this in response to the x xz stuff it is. yeah it okay. is this part right here yeah oh it is okay i see that up there like i hear this is interesting because i think there are people thinking about this for those that are not familiar i think the summary on this is there was an individual in a community that worked to build trust in that community and take on a position of leadership. And then when they were in that position of leadership, um, introduced some real problems and vulnerabilities to the community. So um, I, <laughs> I still struggle with how we could even see that in the first place. I really do. And this was like a over a year process that this person took on to gain trust and maintainership roles within the community. Like, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, that's a risk that open source has just by its very nature, right? Yeah. Like we're just all coming together, working on this project. Like, I don't, I don't know people super well. And I've, you know, maybe given them permissions to merge and to do other things just based on the fact that they've contributed to the project and they seem to care and they seem yeah. to be normal. Maybe that's what you've been up to for the last four years, right. Elizabeth. Yeah, you can wait, <laughs> I'm playing the long game, man. Yeah, really long game. <laughs> really, really, really long game. <laughs> it's part of your balance strategy. <laughs> like, there's a, sorry, I'm going to take a side quest. There's a key and peel um, uh, skit about how they're going to rob a bank, but to get inside, they're going to like get jobs as tellers and then they're going to work there for 10 years and then really get to know it. And the guy's like, well, that's just a job. Like, that's just us like working. Like, so it's similar, right? Like, you, I mean, yeah. How do you, I don't know how you prevent that. Honestly, I don't without just locking down your project completely. And even then like, yeah, so that's against open source. So then you're not open source anymore. Yeah, that's a, it's a really tricky one for me. Like, is there anything we could have seen at a time in XZ? And I just keep landing on no is the answer. Like, yeah. And I think Emma's point also is that, um, you know, people have been working on um, building trust and building diverse and safe spaces and what goes into that for a long time. And mm -hmm. so this call to action um, is to focus on trust was like, 
kind of just dismissing all of the work that has been done in the in this space to build those communities of trust and to build those uh you know diverse leaders that um yeah that that create safe spaces for those of us uh who are in the project so i think that was kind of also the this like call to action like hey here's this great idea that someone had <laughs> someone prominent had and it was a little bit like well yes we have been doing that but in a different way and under different names we refer to it more as inclusive and like many eyes you know on something mm -hmm. so i mean that might be um to your point about catching things like i feel like the more folks you do have in leadership positions the more chances you are to there to catch something oh. that would be off Whereas if there's just one maintainer and they, you know, bring on a buddy, well now, you know, they're the only people. But if you have like a more diverse and uh, broader frame of of looking at things, you might have you might pick up on things that somebody else might not. I don't know. Um, yeah. So I don't know if there is like a an yeah. action item for this. I mean, for what it's worth, we I are. Think that maybe we want to. Go ahead, Ruth. Yeah, sorry. So, I, do we want to look at the metric itself as well, like the particular yeah. metric, right? Because I think Matt said something about like it could be that we need to create another metric that kind of addresses like trust, or maybe looking at the metric to see what. This is what are the what makes it inclusive leadership. I don't know. Like, I think we we do we do. Um, I don't know when we do like we think of metrics and like kind of like update metrics. So this could also be like bringing it back to the team that does that and like okay, what does this metric include and like. Because then it could just be we have to create another metric that so we don't also because these metrics were created on that the di working group and like you know so we don't lose the intent of the metric what do we think might go into a trust trusted leadership or tr tr trust something what what might be something that goes into that metric? I'm just spitballing here. How, like how does, is the question, how do we build trust in the community or how do we like, I don't know. Yeah, I'm just thinking of if we were to create a separate metric, mm -hmm. what would be in it? Like how, what would be different than this one? than the one we just had. This one. Nope. Where'd it go? There it is. These Zoom pop-ups always get in my way. I mean, there's a, at least in like um, academe, there's like a million, maybe a trillion papers on trust and how to build trust. <laughs> it's like this, it's like a topic that probably lives in every discipline, like in every domain, like I'm sure it's in politics, I'm sure it's, I know it's in information systems and management. So, I mean, and, I'm sure there's a lot of, a lot of stuff out there about building trust. And to Emma's point, something like this, I think is what she's talking about. So like our, our leadership roles limited by time and require time term renewal. So that doesn't really have much to do with being inclusive. It's more about making sure leadership has checks and balances so that something like an XZ doesn't isn't likely to happen because you are, you know, bringing new folks in accountability. Yes, Allison. Yes. So um, like new, what criteria are new leaders considered might be inclusive, but also might be the trust thing. Is there a graceful way to move people out? Like this one too, are leaders limited in the number of leadership roles one person can hold? Like how much, how much sway does one person get in a leadership team? 
I think that's kind of maybe the heart of what Emma's getting to is like somebody who cares about trust and cares about protecting their community and making it safe from an XZ sort of way might not look at this metric as something that can provide that or give insight to because it has that word inclusive in it. And I think that's maybe the heart of what Emma's trying to say. Gosh, I'm not real sure how to move forward on this. I'm not either. <laughs> I, <don't> <laughs> I hear you and I hear I think I hear what Emma's saying. You know, we kind of came at it by like giving opportunities for more kind of more people to be a part of leadership as mm -hmm. opposed to, like we're coming at it from that lens, but also it can kind of help protect from mm -hmm. from the other from a risky standpoint. So I don't know. Maybe we could add well, is it is this the only yeah is this the only metric with the inclusive perfect in it? It's a good question. I like, looked at I didn't look at that. I looked we had that metric psychological safety. Remember that? You worked on that yeah. really a lot, Elizabeth. And that was like the closest thing I could think of when I could think of Yeah. Some, you know what I mean? Like some I don't know. Yeah, this I, I think it's more like the, the inclusive perfect kind of limit how people view them or use the metric or discover the metric like without even have like looking at what the metric entails, right? So it's like okay, I'm looking for I'm maybe I'm browsing the list and um, maybe I might be mistaken as well. I'm browsing the list of metrics and I see inclusive leadership. I might not feel it talks about trust. Maybe I might I might mistake it to be something else without even looking at the metric itself or reading through. I mean we could consider uh inclusive and 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 trusted leadership i don't i don't know that that's the right word though i would say like balanced or uh i don't know something else as somebody going through all the metrics right now <laughs> i also like you to your point like these little shifts have kind of cascading impacts Mm hmm. Um, so I don't know. It's yes. It's kind of like to it, it. It maybe there's something that is like a a a bus a, a bus factor lottery factor, but also for le well, I mean, bus factor kind of does that, but um, maybe it should be more of like distributed leadership or. Um, like like Allison says, maybe like accountable leadership or something like that, where we could create a new metric that does address what Emma's talking about that could infuse bits of this inclusive leadership from a different. I would prefer that just from a workflow perspective. Yeah. Um, that we leave inclusive leadership just as is, and new metrics can be developed because that's that is what we do is develop, yeah accountable leadership or yeah, something, but I would be inclined for that. Yeah, I'm thinking, oh, that's okay. It's okay, Earl, no worries. We're just talking about this uh, inclusive leadership renaming based on a, an issue that was opened by Emma Irwin. So we're thinking of, so when we are looking at this metric, like, like this, this bit, are leaders limited in the number of leadership roles? Like, I feel like that is a question that can also apply to a, 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 an accountable leadership metric. Would you all agree? Yeah, where it has a different like lens, you're, you're asking that question, question for a different reason, but it's still a valid question to ask. Yeah, okay. Um, I will take that action item to start that metric. 
just because I do have some thoughts on it. So, um, yeah. We can bring that back here. I hate these Zoom pop-ups. Oh, oh, I'm putting it in a, in the, I'm, re <coughs> excuse me, responding to the issue as well. Okay, perfect. Start. And if anybody wants to work on that with me, just let me know and I'll loop you into the early things. Otherwise, I'll just bring it back to this group um, to chat more about it. Oh, I put this under the wrong thing. Oh, no, I didn't. I did put it under the right thing. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and move on unless people have other thoughts about this. And it's super valid if you want to just kind of mull it over until next week, too. We can bring this up again and chat more about it. Okie dokie. I wanted to uh, just bring this up again. This is something that has been on our list forever, forever. And we've had various folks come and go that want to work on it, but we never really made progress. I don't think. I don't think no, we. Okay. We I think the the. I think we did make a little progress, just in the sense of like thinking through which of these terms and um, are that we want to focus on and, and where they exist. So I do think there has been some mapping on where they exist. Okay. Um, Is that what these are? Um, oh, no, that was no, from... that's just the, yeah. Okay. And so I had actually done that, um, but I don't think I shared it here. Oh. One of the challenges is that some of these terms are in the software and so i think like if i look at this list like i think master is a term that is used a lot that was one that you know it was um i, I don't know is it still part of github like is that still what the branch is called no they they default you can rename it yes yeah, but like I still think some of the software, I don't know, maybe it hasn't been renamed because if it does, yeah, it changed to main. Yeah, but the old like artifacts from, yeah. Yeah, so I think like cleaning that up is not a trivial matter. That doesn't mean that it shouldn't be done. But um, anyway, I and I think there was, when I saw the list, it was kind of clear clearly on some types of documents and be, instead of just like saying here's the list y'all just fix it like having some sort of thoughtful way to really do that work i'd have to track it down where i actually have that list but i had done okay. search i was just uh going through the repos today and cleaning some stuff up and okay this was still hanging out so i just wanted to bring it up again uh, I think it's a good thing to bring up um, and maybe we could start with like just an evaluation of the things that are on the web page like yes at, at least facing right there like it's kind of like um, it's like anything when you take everything on all at once and then like it's hard to put all those things on just the like you have a ten I have a tendency of putting everything on the head of a pin like it's it's just really hard. You have all this stuff, and you try to collapse it into one day. And maybe we could, yeah, just start with the website, and um, and then go from there. Yes, I agree. Um, does anyone on this call want to do that? I think uh, if you go to any of the well, we need to take this off. I don't. I don't know how this got on here. I saw your note in the website. Yeah, slide. I, I don't recall that being there. I. I want. I think maybe Sean added it when we were playing around with the search. So okay. I'll see if I can take that off. Okay. Um, but that being said, any of these, I think even this, uh, will do the whole website. So um, if anybody wants to kind of take this on, it's super easy. Uh, I shouldn't say that. It's. It. It can be. It can happen right here. Um, I think you can do it. Can't you do it? Um, you want to do it right now? Well, yeah. I mean, just pick one. Let's see. 
Sorry, I just I just jumped on. Do you need help with search? No one no. reached out to me, so yeah, no. I, put, no I just I put something in the website channel, Kevin. It was just on the metrics. Okay, I'm very familiar with search, so if you, <laughs> no. if you, if you need good. something, you could just reach out. You don't need to. <laughs> no, we were good. We're uh, we were looking at the. Um, oops. We were look. We were just talking about this thing, that I think Sean put in here. This thing, and we at the yeah, top of all the metrics. We don't need it at the top of all the metrics, so I'll take that back out. Um. Yeah. So we're good. Um. Okay. So abort was good. Let's try. Okay. And is this searching like the whole website? Even the metrics yeah the whole yeah, okay yeah yeah yeah, okay. yeah arrow oh i got a notification recorded okay uh i started talking before I... anyway uh so is the first the first task is what you're doing right now and just double checking if these terms are like listed anywhere and then the second action is actually going in the website like repository and changing the the code okay if, yeah if we find something if we find uh, something then there will be a discussion of like what should we be using instead. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, because uh, we are we're just a WordPress WordPress site, so the mm -hmm. code doesn't actually live in GitHub for the website itself. Okay. Uh, but a lot of the content does, if that makes sense. Yeah, um, so yeah. It pulls from there, so we we probably would be end up going back here. Let's see about master. That one seems to be the most likely. Yeah. Maybe you have to go back. Yeah, I might have to. Oh, master. Yeah, I think we, I think we did a pretty good job of getting rid of master a couple mm -hmm. of years back. We kind of scrubbed everything. Oh, yeah. There. The biggest issue, Kevin, I think, is in some of the software repositories. Oh, just yeah. Because of the relationship with GitHub from years ago. Uh, and I'm not, and I'm not sure if I'm not sure if Biturgia ever made the switch. I know they were, uh, they were having some discussions about maybe uh, about that. So I do see this in some of the older metrics where it's referencing that. So what so change? So that, I think that would be a broken link if you went there. Why does that work? Oh, I guess it automatically changes it to main, to main. but it's listed as master. Yeah, so we need to. So, so the, right. So that'd be an easy yeah. enough fix. Yeah, right. yeah Get, GitHub does an auto redirect on those. OK, but we should change that for sure. So it is it is actually changed on GitHub. So yeah, but not. But and this is this content is not right. The way it pre is presented. Yeah. So um, for those who don't know, uh, Kevin and Matt are, have been going or will be going through and others will be going through each metric, um, tightening them up or changing our template a little bit. So these will all get caught during that process, I would imagine. Is that is that fair to say? Matt? Yeah, I've been actually thinking about the process today a little bit. Um, yeah. I don't have it set, but or at least I don't have it fully worked out in my mind to share with people. Yeah. Like, I'm not sure that all that content would necessarily be part of the review. I see. Okay. So we'll just add that. Okay. Well, for those links that point to our stuff on GitHub, uh, do we want to actually include the full URL? It might be better to just. Uh, I thought the same uh, thing. Just, hide say, those. Click, just say click here, mm -hmm. and then the here is highlighted. If we if we're pointing to external content, something outside of our working group, or or I'm sorry, not working group, but outside of our community, maybe that's where we would include the full URL. So you're talking about uh, just so I understand what you're talking about. This at the bottom here, not saying this, just yeah, putting, okay, yeah, just so uh, here, just making it here, yeah. yeah. Since it, it's it's our content, right? So yeah, just link that way. That, that and that would so, this is kind of a different, but like. So yes, I agree, Kevin, because then this kind of gets in line. Well, I'm trying to, in this version three, like I'm trying to get less stuff in the metrics while still yeah. doing what they do. Yeah. But fewer words are what we need is really my biggest push. 
Yeah, for sure. Okay, so let's. Uh, um, uh, to uh, not show the full URL and also change. Well, yeah, because I don't even want, like if somebody hovers over that, I don't even want them to see that. Like they should that's, just- That's not, that shouldn't be too hard. Yeah. Okay. And, I, and I, I would say if we're making that change, we should probably make that change for all URLs and not just Oh yeah, yeah, not yeah. Not just the problematic ones. Yeah. But all all internal URLs. Sorry, yeah. Sorry. All uh, internal links. Yeah. Yeah. Totally got it. And then the last one is just whitelist. So let's just. Oh, I don't. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> okay. So not too surprising for me. There were like 14 that still had probably links to just the GitHub master branch. Yeah. yeah, so we can clean that up. Now, again, this doesn't go to any of the software, Augur or Grimoire Lab software at all, or any of our Slack bots or any of that, but um, definitely okay. at least there was that. Okay. I'm putting a ta-da in there too. Um, the, maybe the badging bots too. All right, thanks everybody. That's <laughs> that was outstanding for a really long time, and we just knocked it out. So I love you. Uh, I know we need to work on this, but I see there's other things, and we have nine minutes. So uh, uh, I want to uh, maybe give space for this first. The other, really quickly, just we had already alluded to this. We're putting together a new metric template. I'll be sharing that with folks to receive comments and feedback on. But we talked about it a little bit today or yesterday in the community call. So that's that. And then I just wanted to let people know that it's kind of a project independent of chaos. Um, but we're going to be doing some workshops across Africa to take a look at the impact of copilot in the lives of Africans and Ruth is starting uh, coordinating some of that work uh, across the workshops would be in different regions in Africa github has uh, offered to provide up to 250 copilot licenses. So we can do these workshops, um, provide these licenses, and just kind of see if, if things like Copilot are having a positive impact in the lives of people. So I just wanted to bring that to people's attention. Awesome. And then this last one, I'm not sure who put that on there. Um, I wrote that. Hello, Elizabeth. Hadenka here. Hi. <laughs> All right. I, I don't know if we'll be able to discuss this in nine minutes, but um, I, I was walking through the Project Bajin uh, website and I was kind of testing around some things to understand the workflow. And I discovered that I could actually get a badge on a non-existing project. So if you can just click on the Project Bajin um, link and then go to one of the... Um, Batched project, you would see what I, I'm saying. So, yeah, nest and then right there. So, I, um, I, I just want to ask that do we have like check and balances like we do for event badging where we have reviewers review before we then badge this event? Because, um, I then have a concern for the quality of projects that we batch if we don't have any checks for the quality of the projects. This is a great point. Um, we don't at the moment have any human review 
Um, and I think the concern was is that the number of projects would far surpass the number of events. And so asking people to do the reviews would not be something that we could accommodate. But that said, I'm curious if you have thoughts yourself going through this process as to how we might include people to kind of check on the things that you had done on the sample one, you know, versus like GitLab going through the process. Okay, so right now I don't have a thought because I wasn't so sure um, if there had been something in place to check me that. So um, I would go ahead and think about it and then come back to you on that. Is that fine? Okay. Oh, yeah, of course. I mean, I think... my, first, my first reaction was that because we don't have a lot at the moment, of, you know, we mm -hmm. have four projects right now. Or, or five <laughs> after you added one um that that as we're starting to see more applications um we we do have a team that kind of looks at things after the fact after a badge is awarded the way that we were just looking at what what you had asked us to take a look at but i'm not sure what what we would look at so if you go back to what yeah, so like, if you just go back to test project badging, go to the top, yeah. Like, so I basically copied um, everything that was in the, or the template. For the DEI. Just, just for, yeah, nothing else is in the project, just for it to pass, and it passed. Yeah. I thought we were supposed to check on that stuff. Yeah, me too. So maybe we can at least do that. Let's put this in here. Um, yeah, so we are we are at least supposed to check that people aren't just copying the template <laughs> and putting what they want in there. You know, they're supposed to at least work with the template. So thanks for catching that. In in regards to a a project, you know, uh, filling out this worksheet and basically saying, yes, we are attentive to DEI. My yeah. expectation would be that the community itself would kind of police itself or the community yeah. would police itself. If, if for example, if, if project leadership decides to get badged for a certain project and they claim that uh, they are inclusive in certain ways, I, I think if they, if they aren't, I'm, I think the community would probably uh, speak up. <laughs> yeah, and that that has always been the. I agree, Kevin. That's always kind of been the hope is that if a community puts just like this in there, like a community member would be like, "What are you talking about?" Like, um, and we I, don't do we don't do translation on our web pages. Yeah, like, right. You're, you're claiming we do. Yes, that would be definitely. Yeah, I was... think to, um, to Arika's point is this doesn't have a community, so there is nobody to police it or to check it. Um, is this just a, a thing that she just made? So there, it, I think that's her concern is that like it was just a she just opened it, created this thing, and now she has a badge and she doesn't have a community. She doesn't really have a project. It's just kind of a. Oh, the project doesn't exist at all. So there, there's right. no check for even if the project exists. Right. right. And okay. I don't know how you do that honestly because on the other side what if this community is open source but they um maybe are working on putting their code out there but like this is the first thing that they wanted to put out or they do most of their work somewhere else and that like they just have this here so that it could go through the github badging thing like there are exceptions i think and it's that's what makes it really hard to figure out <laughs> you know is there like because you couldn't even you know uh last week okay this was opened last week this whole repository so does that mean that we don't badge them because it's only been a week or like this is a really hard question that he gets a really it's a really good point but really hard to answer what, will... lucy, what does lucy think oh yes yeah. can you hear her snoring <laughs> <laughs> Mm -hmm. He's got all the answers. Okay, so so I have a question. I have a question. I feel like um, badging by chaos is like an endorsement for the work, the open source um, diversity and inclusion that people are doing in their communities. 
So um, leaving it to self-police kind of leaves us vulnerable. I'm just thinking, I might be wrong, that um, we could then be seen to endorse something that is not actually following the DAI practices. So I have May I comment on that when you're done, Elizabeth? Oh, sorry. Oh, go ahead. Okay. But I was just going to say, I had this conversation with a few people at OSSNA about the badging. And my response was, if someone puts a code of conduct in their, uh, in their repository and they're using contributor covenant, for example, it, it stays within the community, right? Like they get reported, like that, that's a thing that the community has to sort out if there are violations, whatever. There's like nobody that's saying, uh, okay, we'll, you know, we'll, we'll take care of this for you. It's, it stays in the community. And for me, this is what this is. Like this is a community internal thing. And we're just giving a badge that says, hey, they, they did this process. That's all. Like we don't, we're not endorsing. And we, we do say that in the DEI.md file at the bottom, like this is not a guarantee that this is a safe space. Like this is like not on chaos. We're just uh, kind of helping surface the fact that they have this file. But I don't know if that's true, but that's kind of my perception of it is like code of conduct stays internal, just like this one. So I, I, I agree with that 100%. Uh, this badging is not, it's not an endorsement by chaos of any project. This badging is just, it's more, it's a statement by that project that says they have beliefs about diversity and inclusion that align with our, with chaos metrics models, basically. Uh, so the, it's very much, they are saying that we have the same belief uh, it's not an endorsement by chaos, though. And maybe maybe event badging is a little bit different. Uh, but with project badging, it was uh, uh, when we when we originally created it, it was with the idea that we don't really have the ability to we don't really have the ability to go and and confirm all of these things that they're saying. And Adi, get to your point about um, like the non projects. I think we had also. Uh, at one point been discussing doing spot checks. So like using our current event badgers, that team, because we have a pretty big team there to just randomly be checking or have that as a, you know, as a as an option or a backup. Um, so do you think that that might address some of the concerns if we did have human just spot checking? I think so. I think spot checking would work, at least for now. Um, event badgers to spot check. Oops. Oh, Lucy. <laughs> I do think that I'm looking at some of the text too, and we don't have to do it right now, but maybe next week, take a look at some of the text to really help reinforce that project badging is about what you had described, Elizabeth and Kevin. Just, you know, that we're endorsing the fact that somebody has taken the time or a community has taken the time to reflect on these things. And that's what we're endorsing. And it might just be as simple as that, these things being these four metrics. Yeah, just explicitly making that clear. Yeah, yeah. maybe in several, in several places, <laughs> just so. <laughs> No matter where you end up on the site or on the DEI.md file, it's just, it's really abundantly clear. Yeah. I like that. All right. We are a little over time today. Sorry, everybody. These were great conversations. Thank you so much for popping in today. Uh, I hope you have a great rest of your day. We'll see you here same time next week. Bye. 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 Bye.